Hi everyone, this is Eliza, and today I'm answering this question. Should Christians only see counselors, therapists, or psychiatrists who are believers, who basically will provide biblically-based counsel? And this is such an important question, so I've written down some notes that I'm going to make sure I hit each one of them, um, but the, what I will say at the beginning is this is not just an easy yes or no question to answer. That doesn't mean that there isn't clarity or specific parameters that I can provide for you, but um, it's not as easy as just yes and no. So I'm gonna give you some tips to think through if you are asking this question. So before, um, before you, you come to that conclusion, consider these things. But first, I do wanna say that I'm going to prioritize referring people to biblical counseling. And let me just give you a few reasons why. First of all, it focuses on our deepest problem and our ultimate solution. It really does get to the deepest problem that we face, which is basically sin and how it's corrupted all of life, including our relationships. And so um, it, it points us to the fact that we need a perfect savior to rescue us. And biblical counseling is gonna be able to kind of guide you in that really well. It is also uh, fundamentally, it has a di fundamentally different worldview than secular counseling. And it's really, like I already mentioned, it's a worldview that gets to the core of the issues that we face regarding human brokenness and really our distorted worship. It also emphasizes the, the, um, the central importance of your walk with the Lord. In the struggles that you're facing and that is so important and you won't get that from secular counseling it, it's not that they won't respect your faith but it won't centralize your walk with the Lord as you walk through your struggle it's gonna also address just like secular counseling it'll address our emotional our physical and our mental health but biblical counseling is gonna address our spiritual health as it aligns with the Word of God which is really important um, and then it also focuses on the Word of God versus the, I'm sorry, it, it focuses on the promises of God versus the, um, the wisdom of men. And that's really important because the promises of God are eternal and the wisdom of men is, is limited. So that's really a key component about biblical counseling that I think we want to make sure we understand the, the value of that. And then finally, it offers... Biblical counseling, that is, offers eternal hope versus temporary relief. And I will say that temporary relief is not bad. We want to relieve people of their suffering. We don't want to see them in pain or to suffer long. But we, want, we don't want to do it separate from eternal hope. So that's why I'm always going to prioritize biblical counseling. Um, but while that's my norm, I also recognize that there are some situations where it might be helpful to see a secular counselor or therapist or psychiatrist maybe in addition to biblical counseling or for a season as a means of care. And these are some of the reasons why that I would um, consider seeing a secular counselor. But before I share with those, share you those uh, reasons, I do want to say if you are the person who is walking with somebody and you're thinking, maybe they need a secular counselor. Maybe you're a, a pastor or a ministry leader or a biblical counselor, or maybe you're a lay counselor or a church group leader, and you're walking with somebody and you think maybe secular counseling could be helpful for them. Here's what I would say. Find out and really look at or evaluate this person's faith, their own walk with the Lord. How steady and stable are they in their walk of faith? Um, are they a new believer or do they have big gaps in their understanding of God's word and what it means to follow him? If so, that could be a risky time to, to um, point them towards uh, secular counseling alone. So you might not want to do it separate from biblical counseling. So consider their own faith and then consider your relationship with them. So what I will tell you is that People are very willing to give you the space to get maybe training or some references or talk to somebody else who has more training in order for you to be more equipped to continue to walk with them. Because if you have that trusting relationship with them, 
they're willing to um, allow you to have that space to grow yourself so that they can continue to get your wise counsel. So that's just a couple things to consider, their faith and your relationship with them. But if it seems like secular counseling is necessary, um, these are some of the reasons why I would say I could see why it could be helpful. Uh, first of all, it can offer uh, a deeper understanding of systemic or organic issues that are related to mental health that might actually be outside of your scope of care that you're not going to be able to get uh, further training in. So when there's specific expertise needed for things like um, abuse or um, trauma, that's another one, or psychological issues that maybe are going to require evaluation or medication. That's going to be an area where a secular therapist might be very helpful. Um, here's one that I would say is, are they at risk? Do you feel like their well-being or their health or their life is at risk? So somebody who has severe depression or um, suicidal ideation, or maybe somebody who has a severe eating disorder, that's going to be one where you want to make sure you have the right people working with them in their team of care. You want to have people specialized in um, eating disorders. Um, other acute struggles like uh, severe OCD can be another one or um, severe PTSD, things like that, where you have that uh, secular counselor could be helpful to come alongside um, you in caring for them. So uh, here's another thing that I think sometimes we don't think about that maybe a secular counselor could be really helpful is, is any kind of court testimony going to be needed? So in a, maybe a child custody uh, case or a situation where a person has to be, uh, their mental health has to be proven one way or another, you're going to need a secular therapist, counselor, psychologist, um, psychiatrist for that. So that could be a good situation where evidence is going to be needed in court. And then here's the last one I will mention that I think is important for us to think through is if you have a couple, maybe one of them is not a believer and their marriage is struggling and counseling would be helpful, but that one person who's not a believer is saying, I'm willing to go to counseling, but I don't want it to be from a biblical counselor. Well, then a secular counselor would be helpful to, in, to help them engage in some better marriage uh, techniques or conflict management and, and so forth. Um, that could be really helpful and they may not go to a biblical counselor. The same would be true in, in family counseling where maybe you have one person in that family who is willing to go to counseling but not from a biblical counselor. So those are some thoughts for you to consider. Going back to what I said at the beginning, I am always going to prioritize uh, biblical counseling, and um, but I will say this. It sometimes can actually be better to refer to a secular counselor than to a Christian counselor or, or a person who says that they're doing biblical counseling, but that counseling is actually deviated from the Bible's truth. That can actually be even more confusing than going to a secular counselor when you know they're not going to be um, counseling you along the, the, the lines of what the scripture says. Having a counselor who says they're a Christian but does not counsel along the lines of the Bible is actually sometimes more risky. So keep that in mind. And then finally, I'll just leave you with this. Ultimately, biblical counseling provides that richer, deeper understanding of humanity and our struggle and brings the gospel in a way that helps us realize the gospel is not just for that beginning part of our faith, it's for the whole life journey of faith. And that is what brings change in our life. What Jesus has done, what God has, has provided for us through the gospel is what we need at the beginning of our faith and all the way through because that's what's gonna conform us into the image and likeness of God.